so let's take a look at example nine. The following grouped frequency distribution shows the time taken for students to solve a puzzle using this data, draw a cumulative frequency histogram. So let's start to, to break down some of that vocab. You hear distribution, you know, you're just looking at a table. Table of frequencies, all right? Specifically frequencies, not relative frequencies. That's fine. Shows the time taken for students to solve a puzzle. Draw a cumulative frequency histogram. All right, so as we start to go through this, you owe me a graph at the end, right? This, this direction says draw. Okay, we're gonna draw a histogram. A histogram's like a bar chart, so there's gonna be some rectangles involved. I'll need to put my variable along the x-axis and cumulative frequency along the y-axis. All right, so keeping that in mind, let's figure out what is the variable in this problem. Right? What is varying? So I'm gonna put that right here, variable, because we wanna get into the habit. Every time you read a problem, ask yourself, what is varying in this problem? And if I look, it looks like I got a group of students and I'm gonna keep track of the time it takes them to solve a puzzle. If I look at my table, it looks like the units on this are seconds. So I'll keep that in mind. All right, and if we're talking about time to take or time taken to solve a puzzle, this is a numerical variable, right? So I'll just put that over here, numerical. Okay. It would be a continuous numerical variable because we always measure time. And if I look at the way it's presented to me, they've actually grouped it, right? They're saying time is somewhere between zero and five seconds, five and 10, 10 and 15. So what they've actually done here is represented those times in groups or in categories, right? So it's represented in categories this time. And I only mention that because yes, the direction says histogram, but if it had said bar chart, we'd be doing the same thing. So no harm, no foul there. So if I wanna go ahead and do this, the first thing I need to pay attention to is that they wanted a cumulative frequency histogram. So I have the frequencies and I've got to build to the cumulatives. And if you remember from the previous example, what we did or what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zigzag. So I'm gonna zig this way and zag, so two plus nine is 11. 11 plus nine is 20. 20 plus eight, 28. 28 plus three, 31. And 31 plus one, 32. So just as a note, let me check that my numbers are correct because if I add up the frequency column, it should total out to 32 and I just wanna make sure I, I'm okay with my math here. So two plus nine plus, yes, 32. So I'm doing okay. I haven't accidentally left a student out. So I've got 32 students. So if I wanna to start to create this graph, I need an X and a Y axis. If I look at my cumulative frequencies, I can see on the Y's I'm gonna go from two to 32. And on the X's, it looks like I'm gonna go from zero to 30 in groups of five. Okay, so let me go ahead and just start to play this out. So I will start my graph here. So I think I got on five. Thirty, that seems pretty good. All right, now for, again, my y-axis, I wanna put cumulative frequencies here. I need to go at least as high as 32, so I think I'll go by fives again. Hope I don't run out of room. Oh, I do run out of room, so I'm actually gonna go by tens. 10, 20, 30. So I was gonna go by fives, but I was running out of room for the space I had. No problem, I will just rescale that to tens. 
So we've got 10, 20, 30. All right. Now another thing, we've got our axes scaled, but you need both of these labeled. If you don't label your x-axis, we're gonna get into trouble there as well. So here it is, this is time taken to solve puzzle. And the units for this are in seconds. And over here on the y-axis, let me see if I can get my elbow in, I've got cumulative frequency. All right, so going from there, it looks like from zero to five seconds, my, my height needs to be two units. So let me go ahead and go make a rectangle two units high. It's not gonna be very high. That looks about right. Okay. My next one needs to be 11 units high. So let me go up here. Seems about right. All right, then we need to actually go all the way up to 20. the next one 31 and then all the way up 32 all right let me start filling these in Not too bad. And usually what I do is I will just write the heights here. You don't have to, but I always encourage you to over label and over scale your graphs. I always like to use the rule of thumb that if somebody came into my classroom or my office and they didn't read any of the words and see this, this table, if they were just able to see the graph, could they infer what this, this data this graphic summary, what was going on with the data. And I would hope that they could. They say, okay, time taken to solve the puzzle in seconds. So this is time along the x-axis. This is cumulative frequency along the y. So a couple things I wanna just take note of. Cumulative graphs, whether they're frequency histograms or relative frequency histograms, but cumulative graphs always increase as you move left to right. And when I say from left to right, I mean along the x-axis. Okay, so as time was increasing, so were the cumulative frequency counts. And that's because we're accumulating data, that will always be the case. And just in case we're having a, a little bit of a struggle as to, okay, how could I have written a sentence about this? So how could I have written a sentence about Let's look, our variable 15 to 20 and 28. I'm just picking those because they're here. All right, I could say 28 students solved the puzzle in 20 seconds or less. So it's always, you take your, whatever your cumulative frequency count is, and it's just your X value or less. So our highest X value, because this was presented categorically, was 20 seconds. So 28 students took them 20 seconds or less to solve this puzzle. Eight students exactly solved the puzzle between 15 and 20 seconds, but 28 of them, so a good chunk of them, right? 28 out of the 32 were solving it in 20 seconds or less. Hey Math 43, I just want to take a look at example 9. We did example 9 by hand, but let's take a look at it now as if we were going to try and do it 
on our calculators. And just for fun, I want to make sure, let, let's just make a frequency histogram. Let's do one of those. And let's also do the cumulative frequency histogram. So I'm going to make one of these graphs on my calculator. But I want to talk about how we could make that graph on your calculator because we have this situation in example nine where our variable is time, which is continuous numerical. But I've, I've grouped the times into categories and how do we make that work in our calculator because they are numbers but they're grouped. So, so let me show you what we can do in terms of creating this graph on our graphing calculator. So the first thing I want to do, I always want to do data entry. So let me go into my stat button and let's edit, let's see what I've got left. It looks like I have some old data. I'm going to go clear out my list. If you remember from before, one of the ways to clear out your lists is to go up into the definition of L1. So that L1 itself has the black background, not the first cell, but actually the name of the list. And it's a two button click. You can go clear, enter. And you can feel free to do that. I just, I want to show you now a second way to clear out your lists. So here's a different option. If I go back to my home screen, which is second mode, if I quit out of that, if you hit stat, Perhaps you noticed this, perhaps you didn't. You have option four in this menu called clear list. So I can click on four, and then what I need to tell my calculator is which list would I like to clear out. So I can hit second and L1, clear that out, and there I am. Oh, and I just noticed over here I've got key, uh, large screen. Let me go to key press history just so you have that that view for yourself also. Now, if you wanted to clear out more than one list, um, you can do this. Let me just show you real quick, right? L1's all clear, but let me put some fake data in here. Let me put it in L1, L2, and then I'll even put some stuff in L3. Okay, so let's say I wanted to clear out all three of those. I could go up into L3, clear, enter. Up into L2, clear, enter. Same deal with L1. but let me go back to my home screen and use this new option here. So I'm going to hit stat. I'm going to do option four. I definitely want L1 cleared out, but I would also like L2 and L3. As long as you separate those lists with commas, you're good to go. So I will hit the comma key, which is just above my seven key, and then I will clear out L2, clear out L3. Once I hit enter, it's done. So we've got that, that going on. That's one way to clear out lists. Okay, let's get back to this problem. So let me just re refresh my screen. I'll clear this out. Let's hit stat. Let's go in here. All right. Now I want to put data into L1. And the way our data was given to us is we had 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, so on and so forth. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to make a frequency histogram. But your calculator can't take intervals of times. It can only take one number. So what we do in stats, when we have the interval from 0 to 5, we take the halfway point, the midpoint of that. So which time is halfway between 0 and 5? Well, the number that's halfway between 0 and 5 is 2.5. So if I was halfway between 0 seconds and 5 seconds, I would be at 2.5 seconds. And if you can't kind of hear that out in your head, no problem. Here's how you take the average of two numbers. You'll add 0 and 5 together, and then you will divide by 2. And we would call that our representative time. So yes, in that first interval, it's 0 to 5 seconds, but we will represent that in L1 with the number 2.5. So if I want to continue off of that, if I wanted the midpoint between 5 and 10, I need to average those two numbers. So let me add those up. I'll do 5 plus 10, and let me divide that by 2, get their average. So that was 7.5. So let me keep that number in mind. I'm going to go back into my list, and now I'm going to enter in 7.5. Okay, And I'm going to repeat that process. The average of 10 and 15 is 12.5. And then if I keep going, we've got 17.5, uh, 22.5, and then finally 27.5. Oops, not 275. There we go. Okay, and if I look, the last data entry is in the sixth cell. How many categories did I have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm good to go there. Let's put our frequencies in. So we got two, 
nine, nine, eight, three, and one. Whew. All right, all my data's in. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clear out all of this shenanigans, okay? So once we get our data in, the next thing you wanna do is set up your stat plot. Always the same, get your data, set up a stat plot, zoom. So here we go, second y equals, okay? Now if I look at, at my stat plots the way they are, looks like I have one on, two off, that's great. Um, right now I am making a histogram here, so I have the correct type. Uh, my variable is in L1, but my frequencies are not the number one. I have a whole frequency list in L2, so I need to edit this out. So let me hit enter, scroll down here to L2, we'll hit second, L2. Right, and I had to hit enter to make it save in there. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna hit zoom nine. So let's go make this, and again, this is a frequency histogram. This is not the cumulative frequency histogram. So it won't look like this just yet. I'll do that in a moment. So I'm gonna hit zoom. Now you can, oh, here we are again, where it gives me that weird error. I'm gonna go back to my home page or my home screen, and then I'm gonna hit zoom. You can scroll all the way down and hit enter once you hit nine, but I'm lazy, so I just want to hit nine, and it'll do it for me, okay? And now taking a look at that, all right, I've got zoom nine that I hit, and I see this gap here, okay? There's something missing in the data, and that's kind of funky because I had no zeros for my frequencies. And so what's going on here, and what tends to happen when your calculator's trying to guess your window is that it's just not the best window for us. So let me, let, let's go into our window and adjust it. So if I look at my window, it's starting at 2.5, that's great. It's going up to 31.6, that's fine also. You can adjust your min and your max if you want. I think I'm going to. Our lowest time is 2.5, I'll, I'll go to zero, just give it a little bit less. Uh, lower number on that left hand side. I think our highest number was 27.5. So maybe I'll go to 30 on this end. We'll see if that works. Here's where the bigger problem is. The, the scales, they are making rectangles every 4.16 units. And if you look at how our groups are made, our groups are made in chunks of five seconds, not 4.2 seconds. So I'm gonna change this X scale to five and I'm gonna be happier with that. In terms of the heights, the Ys, I was okay with it. It looks like my lowest frequency is one and my highest is nine, and that's getting covered by negative two, uh, or negative 2.7 and 10. So kind of recalling from the last time we did this, whenever you adjust the window, don't hit zoom nine, it'll just reset you to all the stuff we just had. At that point, hit graph, and that, is a better looking histogram, right? If I trace this out, it's going to match my frequency numbers. So how many students took between zero and five seconds to complete that puzzle? About two, not even about exactly two. Five to 10, nine, nine, eight, three, and one. Right? So we're good to go there. So there's your look at creating a frequency histogram. Now our original problem asked us for the cumulative frequency histogram. And we can do that, so let's go ahead and hit stat, and then I'll hit edit, and I'm gonna put my cumulative numbers into L3. So we've got two, 11, give me a sec. All right, so we've got those in there, great. I'm gonna clear this out just cause it's getting a little busy in there. All right, so once we get our data entry, right? This, this standard process, put your data in, set your stat plot, zoom nine. All right, so I put my data in, set my stat plot. Let's see what we got. At this point, one plot's on, two plots are off. Great. On this plot that's on, I am making a histogram. Fantastic. My variable is in L1, time is in L1 but I don't wanna do frequencies this time out. I wanna do cumulative frequencies. So I still need to go edit this. So let me scroll down here and I wanna put L3 and I'm gonna hit enter just to save it. And so once I'm there, great. Now you can hit graph if you want, but that graph was based off of our frequencies, not our cumulative frequencies. And if you think about the Y axis before, the Y axis was gonna go from about one to nine because our lowest frequency was one and our highest frequency is nine. 
And on the cumulatives, that's just not enough, right? Our lowest cumulative frequency is two and the highest is 32. So I don't wanna use the window from before. I'm just gonna have my calculator re rework this. I'm gonna hit zoom. There's my favorite error that I wish I could get rid of. I'm gonna hit zoom nine. Okay, so now I have something that's on its way to what we want, but it's not quite looking like the one we drew by hand. No problem. It just means you need to adjust your window. So let me hit window. If I take a look at this, again, I see I'm going from 2.5 to 30. I'm just going to reset that. I'll go 0 to 35. You know, get a little crazy with it. Go to 36. Oh, my God. Go to 37. Do what you want. Um, but again, this X scale, you see it at 3.125, which is a great guess from our calculators, but the, the calculators just, they don't know we're going by five seconds. So I'm going to change this to five. Again, I'm asking my calculator, please make a rectangle every five seconds along that X axis. And in terms of the heights, this looks pretty good, negative nine to 37. I really only needed it to go from two to 32. So it's gone a little bit under and a little bit over. That's great. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit graph. And then that is looking a lot more like my cumulative frequency histogram that I made by hand. And again, I could trace this and you see all of those cumulative counts showing up exactly as we had. I even had a little bit of space here on the right hand side, because if you remember from my window, I was going to an X axis of or an X max of 35. So this is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Um, and you can see, well, it's hard to see, there would have been tick marks every five units here. Just for fun, let me swap this out on you. Let's say we wanted to make a tick mark. I don't, you could go every one unit, but it's gonna be pretty crowded. Oof, do you see if I hit every one unit, how terrible that would look? But then you could still see the same rectangles hitting where I want. I'm gonna head back and say, let's stay at five. But on the x's, why don't we make a tick mark on the x-axis if I want to match this. Let's go every five units on the x-axis and hit graph. Now you can see 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So you can play around with your window if you want. And if I scroll down here, that's what we were doing in all of these, right? So that's where the key up on Canvas is telling you uh, or is telling you how to how to make these graphs. Now on all of these graphs, of course, I've labeled the x-axis with the variable and the units and the y-axis with frequency. Right? When we come down here and we make our cumulative graphs, right? You see x-axis on or I'm sorry, label on the x-axis, variable and units, cumulative frequency on the y-axis. Now I also mention here the third way to clear out your lists. And this is, um, uh, this is the, well, here's the first way that we've talked about. Here's the second way that we discussed at the beginning of this video. And here's gonna be the last way, the third, the third way. And this is one I probably use the most often. So if we go back to our home screen, I'm gonna clear this out. If you look over the plus sign in blue, there's this word MEM for memory. So let's hit second on the plus sign. And if you look at option four here, this is clear all lists. So it's just gonna wipe out list one, list two, and list three for me right out the gate. So before I hit this, I just want us to take note that if we look at my lists, I have data in L1, L2, L3. Let me get out of that. Okay, home screen, second, plus sign, option four. I don't need to tell my calculator L1, L2, L3. It's just wiping them all out. If I hit enter, I get a done, stat, enter, you see they're all wiped out there. So you've got three different ways to clear data out from your lists. You've got it single entry at a time, and then you've got multiple lists at a time, or just all of the lists at once. Okay, all right, thanks guys, bye.